Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good. As you guys know, I'm out here on the East Coast in the DMV. Um, hopefully the audio sounds good. I'm in my hotel room, but I had to get on this story. Everybody has been sending it to me. It has been a lot going on in the past 48 hours. So let me start by saying this. Um, I believe that a lot of people in the industry and especially Diddy knew that his time was coming. Why? As we all know, Diddy did that speech on the MTV stage when he was getting his so-called flowers. Yeah, and also Cassie for holding me down in the dark times. Love. Although Diddy made it clear during the speech he wanted to thank every single person, even if I didn't say your name, some viewers couldn't help but notice he didn't name drop his rumored current boo, Young Miami, who cheered Puffy on by holding up a Go Poppy sign in the audience. That man thanked every woman in his life, including Cassie, except the woman holding up the Go Poppy sign. Loving Hip Hop Miami star Jesse Wu tweeted. Making the moment even more awkward, a video circulated online showing Miami's City Girls partner in rhyme, JT, suddenly nudging her to sit down and put the sign away. Young Miami didn't seem too bothered by the appearance snub though. Girl, please, she wrote in response to Wu's tweet. In fact, she doubled down on her Diddy support by tweeting, go poppy, along with a red love heart emoji. And out of the blue, he decided to thank Cassie. And a lot of us thought it was really weird because Cassie don't fool with him and you know her fine ass husband, Alex Fine, don't play that either. So it was kind of strange that he thanked Cassie but didn't say anything about Young Miami. So then we fast forward to around the time of the Grammys. And as we all know, Diddy usually throws these huge, elaborate Grammy after parties. So little bro, everywhere. Bridgestone Sunday night, Grammy weekend, dinner party, DJ over tours, drinks and drinks. And for some strange reason, this year he didn't throw anything. You know, the parties where he has that big 40-foot bet and, you know, everybody's laid up on top of there. We've been seeing that bet, child, since we was in our teens, okay? And so he didn't throw a party, and I thought that was kind of strange. Well, now there's a new video that has popped up, and you can see Diddy. He's literally the pariah. Like, nobody's acknowledging him, not even Flavor Flav. Like, who is Flavor Flav to ignore somebody? Everybody's literally acting like he's not there. He's tapping his foot. He looks nervous as fuck. You can tell, like, he knows the writing is on the wall. So this whole situation is just getting crazier and crazier. Remember, Cat Williams said it best, all of these big dick deviants are all catching hell in 2024. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All of these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. Again, we are in the age of Aquarius and things are being exposed, okay? This whole celebrity culture, celebrity worship, these old ass celebrities who have been around, okay, since we were kids, who were put up there as some type of, you know, pillars of society. People have literally deified people like Diddy and Jay-Z and others. And now we see that the tides are turning and folks ain't playing no more. People are not entertaining the nonsense and we're seeing, you know what I'm saying, the veil is lifting and we're seeing things for what they are. First and foremost, can we stop acting like Diddy's children are fucking minors? Outside of Chance and the Twins, they're not minors. Diddy's children are grown men. It's very funny how some people are trying to infanticize his grown children. Justin Combs, who is all up and through this lawsuit, is 30 years of age. Christian Combs is 25 years of age, meaning his frontal lobe is fully developed, okay? And these kids know the difference between right and wrong. 
We seen Misa come out and basically blast Diddy for steering the son in the wrong direction, but the stunt, but the son still chose to run behind his father, and now he's caught up in handcuffs. But he's all up in through this lawsuit, so all that, oh, they had his kids on the grass, that's so messed up. You got regular people's kids. You got regular folks who get raided all the time, and people don't give two shits about them and how those kids feel. You got regular folks who are out here doing dirt, putting their kids in harm's way, and nobody cares. If he cared about his children, he'd be steering his boys in the right direction instead of steering them to behave in the same deviant manner. So I feel no ways about his sons being arrested and placed in the grass. So far, they have not been charged. But it's very interesting how everybody's acting like his 30-year-old children. Okay, Christian, like I said, is 25. Quincy is 32. Justin is 30. These are grown men. In what world would these men be considered children? They may be his kids, but these are grown men, okay? So them being in handcuffs, I feel no way because from that lawsuit, if you read that fully redacted lawsuit, Justin is just as deviant as his sick-ass daddy, okay? So on top of that, we also have Stevie J out here. Stevie J is out here wearing a Biggie t-shirt, about to divorce Biggie's ex-wife Faith, and playing prayer music. He's playing gospel music and saying that everybody should be praying for Diddy. He's currently trending right along with Carisha's ass. Let me go ahead and play y'all this quick clip of Stevie J. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. Now, in the court document, this is what's being stated by Stevie J. They're claiming that he's in this, you know, gay sex tape, but then, you know, the porn star came out and said it was him and not Stevie J. But there's a piece of the lawsuit that says this. In line 71, it says, Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that had he engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper Redacted and R.B. Singer Redacted and Stevie J. Remember, the rapper is Meek Mill. The singer is Usher, and the last person who's fully named is Stevie J. Mr. Combs promised to make sure that Mr. Jones wins producer of the year at the Grammys if he engaged in homosexuality. Now, the reason why I can see this being factual and I see why Stevie J is nervous and playing gospel music and asking for prayers is Stevie J for a long time has been seen as a sexual deviant and people made excuses for his behavior. Let me refresh y'all's memory. If you guys remember, it was about a year ago, maybe two years ago, he was doing an interview with a young woman named Leah. And in that interview, this man is literally naked getting head. And I remember I drugged the hell out of him because I'm so tired of some of these black men in this industry not respecting black female journalists. He would have never did that if that was a white woman interviewing him. He would have never been sitting there getting head. He would have never done a video naked. And Stevie J has done this time and time again. Let me go ahead and refresh y'all's memory. I'm, I'm with my best friend, Puff. I'm right back now? with my yeah, I'm at the Star Island right now. If you, I'm not out of here. I'm not even gonna. Yeah, I'm not. It, yeah, it's going down. How's this right here? Yep, Stevie. You see this body right here? Hold on, wait. It's a hair right there. Hold on. <laughs> Steve, Stevie, why am I in bed with you right now? No, he said you want to um. You're, you're a distraction. You're you're a distraction. We trying to talk no, about you're a distraction. Here. No, you're a distraction. We're talking about you. Pick the camera. Where do you want me to take the camera to? All right, so you guys just saw that video. Now, what's very interesting is that Stevie J also said that he was with his best friend Puff, and he was on Star Island. And now we have Star Island being raided, his best friend Puff's home. So that's very interesting. That was almost two years ago when he disrespected that woman. Then a new video has surfaced of Stevie J being interviewed by two black women, and he proceeds to try and pull out his schlong. Okay? No respect at all for these black female interviewers. Y'all go ahead and check this out. All right, so y'all just saw that clip. So if he's willing to sit there and expose himself in a professional setting with cameras, 
What do y'all think Stevie J's engaged in with Puffy behind the scenes? I definitely believe a lot of what this lawsuit is saying. And this is why he's up here nervous playing gospel music and asking for prayers because he's currently trending right now. So now on top of that, if you guys remember, I told you guys this a few streams ago. I said the reason why 50 Cent won't shut the fuck up is because his baby mama been fucking Diddy for years. Y'all thought I was reaching. But 50 Cent and Diddy have been beefing and battling because his baby mother is tied to Diddy and it's not a good look. If you guys don't remember, back in 2022, Daphne Joy and 50 Cent got into it on social media. She called herself trying to make 50 Cent jealous. So she took to social media and she took to her stories and she wrote, Happy birthday to my favorite person at Diddy. Okay. Then she posted a picture of her and Diddy in the ocean. And so, you know, and she wrote blessed. So after that, 50 Cent came onto the post and he wrote the following. 50 Cent says, oh shit, your mommy's over there with Puffy, LOL. Remember what I told you the other day? These bitches be crazy, shaking my head. So then Daphne comes by and she replies to this post on the shade room. And she says, please stop doing this to me. I never bother you. And I'm an outstanding mother to our son. Can we please just focus on that, please? And then she says this, I hate speaking about my private life on social media, but I feel it needs to be addressed. I'm so tired of my narrative being what it is. I was in a two-year relationship 10 years ago, and out of that relationship, God blessed me with a beautiful, healthy baby boy. Although my child's father and I parted ways, I shifted my focus on my son's well-being emotionally, spiritually, and everything in between. I've healed privately, matured, and I've been closer to God than ever before, really appreciating this life. I just want to be happy and left alone. We're all human and you never know where life can take you. I value and cherish everyone I bring into my life. And when I finally show a glimpse of my happiness, I feel I'm attacked for it. I'm so tired of defending my character, being prejudged and constantly villainized. I'm not doing anything wrong. I wish no ill to anyone. I just want to be happy. Thank you and God bless. So that is what she wrote. And, you know, it's very interesting that back and forth. But like I told you guys, that was the real reason why 50 Cent has been keeping his foot on Diddy's neck. Because Daphne Joy has been fucking Diddy for a long time. And 50 is really salty about that. But now what's very interesting is that all her tea's being spilled right along with that self-proclaimed whore, Young Miami. Remember this was her? Talking about she's a whore? I'm really a whore. Like, I'm a, like, with a, with a W. Like, I'm a whore. You know, everything in her lyrics is all about, you know, being a whore and selling pussy. I don't know why everybody on social media now wants to act shocked. In her rap, she says, I'm a whore, I'm a prostitute, I'm an escort. Woo! Don't nothing but a bag make her pussy talk. Okay, so this is how young Miami has always carried herself. This is how young Miami has always carried herself. So I don't understand why everybody's acting shocked that even more of her tea is being spilled. So this is what's being stated in the lawsuit. And it's under line 197. They're stating this. Robin Greenhill, the accountant, would ensure the wiring funds transfer or cash payments to sex workers. Frankie Santanella, Moy Bond. Brandon Paul, remember that name, Brandon Paul, and KK would also be responsible for ensuring payments to sex workers in cash. Young Miami, Jade, Daphne Joy were paid a monthly fee to work as Mr. Combs sex workers and receive payments via wire transfer from Robin Greenhill, which outlined the defendant's ongoing criminal operations. Daphne Joy is 50 Cent's baby's mother, okay? So not only was she fucking Diddy, she's also selling pussy to the highest bidder on behalf of Diddy. So Diddy is really pimping her out, just like he's pimping out young Miami per this lawsuit. Then they go on to say this, the plaintiff and Combs Rico Enterprise were rehearsing something for the Water Festival in Virginia. Court filings read, Plaintiff Jones personally witnessed Mr. Combs do a few lines of coke in his dressing room. Defendant Sean Combs wanted Tucci, but Brandon forgot it. Remember, Brandon's the white boy, his drug mule. So the defendant, Christina Quorum, called Young Miami, who then brought it on a private jet from Miami. Defendant Sean Combs bragged about having several women on a monthly stipend. According to Plaintiff Jones, the women who received these payments are Carisha Romika Brownlee, a.k.a. Young Miami, 
Jade Ramsey, a.k.a. Jade, and Daphne Joy Cervantes Narvarez, a.k.a. Daphne Joy, were paid a monthly fee as Combs' sex workers. Now remember, when that man, Jonathan Odie, was talking, he was even saying back in 2018 that that is how all the drugs are being moved. Remember, I've been saying this for years on my channel. When Juice World died, okay, they found pounds of of marijuana on that plane. He was clearly drug trafficking. We ain't heard shit about that marijuana since. We don't know what happened. Nobody was charged. It's like the story just poof, disappeared. And then a few weeks later, Lil Wayne was popped, moving, you know what I'm saying, guns on a plane. So a lot of these artists, like I've been saying for a long time, they're not making money off of the industry. We, we already see that. The streams aren't paying out. All these artists are crying about their streams and their numbers. They're all trying to be podcasters, YouTubers, and, you know, TikTokers because the money is not in entertainment. The money is in doing dirt. The money is in selling pussy. The money is in pimping. The, the money is in being drug mules and selling drugs and, you know, saying that I'm doing a concert, but then on the bus, I'm actually moving methamphetamines, uh, uh, Nelly. Okay. On the plane, I'm actually moving pounds and pounds of marijuana <clears throat> juice world. And now we have the same thing in this situation with Diddy having young Miami's biscuit head ass be a drug mule. So let me go ahead and play y'all this Jonathan Odie confession. Check this out. Hip hop agenda is an agenda to move drugs along the United States. They move, you need to report the DEA. They, they move all the dope, okay, all the dope on private jets. All the dope on private jets. All right, so you guys just saw that snip of Jonathan Odie. So this is why I keep telling y'all, especially y'all young girls, everything that glitters is not gold. Do not let women like Carisha make you feel down about yourself and make you feel like you're not shit because you're not, you know, having $10,000 bags and red bottoms. When a bro calls hot, that's bad advice. Bad. And these niggas ain't shit, act bad for life. They treat a good girl wrong and a bad one nice, so act bad. Like I always tell y'all, y'all don't know how these people get their money. And when they talk all this stuff about God and praise God, you don't know what God that they're praying to. You don't know that they're serving the same God that you serve. So this is why I don't envy anybody. This is why I'm not trying to be on nobody's revolt TV, be on nobody else's platform. I rather grow slow and authentic, be on my own platform, be able to use my own voice, speak my own truth. Because you notice everybody that's attached to Diddy is quiet. Joe Budden got so much to say about uh, Drea being pregnant but is very quiet about his homeboy Diddy. The Breakfast Club got all types of excuses for this raid. You got so many men in this industry talking about, oh, they're trying to bring down the black man and this is not right. Look at who is wishing this dude fail. You know what I'm saying? It's his own people. It's his own people cheering him, laughing, and Diddy did it and coming up with new slogans for him. It's his own people, man. Like, so take note of this. Man, you would think the mother he thought a year or two ago when we were popping Ciroc, he thought that we would ride or die for him, man. Like he thought that the motherfucking world of hip hop would stay down and over, you know, especially without him having a case. Like, especially without him having a case, he would think, hey, man, they're going to ride for me. I, I live for this hip hop shit. I lived and died this shit. The hip hop community is going to ride for my innocence. He would assume, I'm sure. Say if he did that, then whatever he get, he get. But so far, I haven't seen no criminal charges. So out for that, I'm going to just sit back and hope for the best. You know, I don't want to see nobody go down, man. And for people to celebrate that, love that, want to see that. Like I always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. For me, it has nothing to do with bringing down the black man. This has no, This is nothing to celebrate or gloat over. I think this entire situation is disturbing and sick. But I've always had a feeling this is what was going on. I've been saying this for years. But the difference is I keep my foot on everybody's neck. You can go back and watch the videos I've done on Harvey Weinstein. You can go back to seven years ago when I was talking about Nickelodeon, before it was ever a topic, when I was talking about Orlando Brown. There has been a lot of sinister things going on in this industry. But as long as people are getting fame, followers, and a check, nobody gave a fuck. And now that the truth is coming out, everybody's trying to paint him as the victim and his boys as the victim. Do you know his son is one of the main people in this Rico, this whole Rico ring? If you read the documents, there's nothing innocent about Justin. I don't care if that's Diddy's child. He's a grown man. 
So this whole situation is just really sad. And again, y'all have to understand that everything that glitters is not gold and be happy for your regular life. Now I see why JT got the hell on. Young Miami is off the chain. And she wants to sit around and act like she's better than other people and go in on folks. Let's not forget, while everybody's trying to act like this is some type of witch hunt, this was Young Miami not even a few months ago. When her and Gina Hun were fighting over Papa Diddy. She said, bitch, you a munch. If I wanted you to eat my pussy, Diddy would have had you on your knees, ho. You a eater. You want a baby, bitch. I have a career, ho. You a certified freak. You haven't heard from Diddy since the awards, reminiscing on abortions. Let that hurt go, Chung Lee. And if you go back and watch my live stream, why I drugged Carisha for the shit she was saying because her goofy ass also wanted twins by Diddy. Okay, so she thinks she's better than this Asian woman, but she's in the same boat. She's no better. She also went on to say, get that head, bread and leave with the airplane. Then she also says, I am. And that's why I fuck on your nigga and I ain't coming off him. I don't care how many pics you post. So this was her bragging. Oh, she loved the position she was in. She was here for it. Couldn't nobody tell her shit. Anybody who says something bad was just hating. They were jealous. They were broke. They were dusty. And now look. Now look at the situation that she's gotten herself tied in. So again, no one has been charged so far. But this is what's being reported. There's some concrete evidence. Because Homeland Security is not going to bust a move unless there's something there. So this is the most recent reporting that's going on right now that's being reported by the New York Post. They're stating this, Sean Diddy Combs alleged victims talking a lot. Fed claim concrete details, explicit allegations of sex trafficking. Federal officials were acting on specific allegations of sex trafficking when they raided two of Diddy's homes on Monday. They say his alleged victims have not been holding back during interviews. An officer with the Department of Homeland Security told the Post the case has been active for several weeks as authorities investigate a range of allegations against the 54-year-old rapper and mogul. We believe that there is a disturbing history of sex trafficking, said the Miami-based officer who spoke under conditions of anonymity. We are responding to concrete, detailed, explicit allegations. This is not random. We didn't choose his name out of a hat. We had allegations that we are following up on. The public first became aware of these allegations when his ex-girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, filed a federal lawsuit against him in November of last year. The case was settled out of court the next day, but has since been followed by three further lawsuits alleging sexual assault, all of which Diddy has strongly denied. So like I told y'all, when that lawsuit was filed by Cassie, I said, Cassie has opened up a can of worms and the floodgates are going to come flooding out. So, I mean, at this point, everybody has a Diddy story. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens going forward. But I definitely believe where there's smoke, there's fire. Just like with Jared Fogle, I caught that out years ago and it eventually came out that he was out there running a whole sex ring with underage children. So this entire situation is disturbing. So I want to know y'all's thoughts on this. How do y'all feel about everything? How do y'all feel about what they're saying that Carisha is out here doing? You know, she's a drug mule for Diddy. She's also a paid sex worker for him. How do y'all feel about Daphne Joy, who is 50 Cent's baby mama, being brought up in the lawsuit as well? I noticed he's been quiet. He didn't tweet anything. You know, he got something to say about everybody else, but he's awfully quiet now that his baby's mama is attached to this shit. So the whole situation is crazy. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Let me know your thoughts. And we will be doing a call-in show soon. Give me some time, but we'll definitely do a call-in show about this entire situation. Once again, I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Feel free to share the video. Most importantly, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. And I will talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.